Hello everybody, it is Mermaid Phantom. Today we are here to discuss how to create your own unique personal style as a mermaid and create your own unique look. Now, as you can see, I am clearly a gothic mermaid. I have been a goth the good majority of my life, as a matter of fact, but you don't need to be a goth to be a mermaid. In fact, I encourage you to be yourself as always. I have a video I will link down in the description that talks all about being yourself along with the rest of the videos in this series. You can find all of the Mersona Bootcamp series videos in the description. They'll be in a nice little neat playlist. For today's video, we're talking all about style. I'm going to get comfortable and then we'll get started. All right, we are comfortable. And by comfortable, I mean I'm on my knees and it doesn't feel very great, but the mosquitoes can't get my legs at least. So to begin this discussion about building your Mersona's appearance, we're going to cover two main sections. First, we're going to talk about the elements of designing your Mersona, and then we're going to talk about some things to consider when designing your unique identity. We are going to start by talking about your hair, or wig, if you prefer to wear a wig. So you can use your real hair for your Mersona's look, there is nothing wrong with that. But if you do want to kind of separate your human identity from your Mersona, then you can opt for a wig, or if you just want to have fun and have colorful hair, you can get a wig. And with wigs, there are a ton of different colors to choose from. There are different textures, different lengths, you can pull them back in ponytails, you can do all sorts of fun things with wigs, they are great. And if you would like a tutorial on how to keep your wig in the water, look in the description down below and I will have a video there for you. So the second thing we have is your makeup. Do you want to be a dark gothic looking mermaid and have darker looks, darker lipstick, darker eyeshadow, darker everything? Do you want to even have makeup? Do you want to be super glamorous looking? Do you want to be natural? Just a little touch of makeup, just enough to make your eyes pop. Whatever it is you want to do, I suggest that you experiment a little bit, see what suits you. I like to change my makeup up quite a bit, that sounds really weird, but I almost always have dark lips unless a client asks me to be more light and airy. I always give them that option. But for the most part, I prefer gothic looks, and I love it, and most other people love it, and a lot of people have been doing it now too, I've noticed. And that's great. So find a style that suits you, play around, have some fun, and if you need some tips on doing your makeup, I have a playlist down below of different makeup tutorials for waterproof makeup. The third aspect of building your Mersona's look is your style, and this can mean your accessories, this can mean your shell bras, which if you want to make one, I have a tutorial in the description to make your own. This is your necklaces you wear, your belts that you wear, the colors of clothing that you wear, and the style of clothing that you wear. I personally find it helpful to kind of stereotype yourself. And I don't mean this in a negative way, obviously you don't negatively stereotype yourself, but I stereotype myself, that's the right phrase for it, as a goth. Like, that's the category I fit into, is goth. Now maybe you want to be more natural, or maybe you want to be like a hip-hop mermaid, like, I don't know, a princess, I don't know. Whatever you want to be, I would stick with a certain style and stay within that realm and I wouldn't change too much because, of course, when it comes to being a mermaid, especially a professional mermaid, you want to have a cohesive look and you want to look the same at all times as not to confuse your potential clients. And it also makes your social media look really messy if you're wearing black one day and rainbow the next day. Just gonna say that. The fourth thing to consider is the color scheme of your character. Color schemes are actually extremely, extremely important, especially if you are going to be a professional mermaid, because usually, like a brand, if you think of like YouTube, for example, you probably think of the color white and red. If you think of Lowell's, you probably think of blue and white. All different brands have their own color scheme. Those are the colors you associate with that brand. If you're going to be a professional mermaid, you should have a color scheme too. For me, I like silver, purple, and black. Sometimes I'll incorporate red, but it's kind of a rare thing. It's not like something I really advertise, just hints of it. So purple, silver, and black are my colors. I urge you to pick colors that suit you, and I wouldn't change them up much, especially if you are going to be a professional mermaid, because that can look messy on social media, and also it can be confusing. For example, I've seen people who have changed their wigs like every month, 
And I'm like, who are you? And their tails, you change your tail, tail color and your hair color. I'm like, who are you now? I don't recognize this person. If you want to build a solid Mersona, I highly urge you to pick a color scheme and stay in that color scheme. Don't stray from it too much. The fifth, final, and most important, possibly, aspect of your Mersona is your tail's design. I saved the best for last. You're welcome. So when I see mermaids in public and they are not wearing their tail, I have no idea who they are. Tails are extremely important in building your Mersona. You need to make sure you spend a lot of time designing your tail. Obviously do not copy others. I have a whole video on not copying others and being yourself. Please watch it. You need to make sure that you're spending a lot of time deciding on what you want your tail to look like. This doesn't just mean colors. This also means your scale pattern. This means if you want fins or not. If you want to have a certain fluke style, which of course, if you do want a certain fluke, that may mean that you can only go with certain tail makers because you don't get the same fluke from every tail maker. They all have their own style. So consider all of those things in addition to considering what you want the mood of your tail to be and also what do you want to use your tail for? I've heard horror stories of professional mermaids working with children and having fins. You know, we all know Reyna and she, I believe, cut her dorsal off because kids were always grabbing at it. So just consider the colors, the style, and the use of your tail when you are trying to come up with a good design. But it's very important to have a solid design that you were very happy with because this is the face of your brand. And this is you. You are the tail. Nobody cares about your face. They just want your tail. Sparta has more followers than I do. Now that we've gotten the five elements of building a solid Mersona out of the way, we are going to talk about a couple of things to bear in mind when you are designing your character's appearance. As we discussed many times throughout this video, if you hope to go pro, you need to take that into account when designing your Mersona. It's very important that you create a solid brand identity and that people can look at you and know who you are. What do you hope to do as a mermaid? That is the next thing to consider. For example, if you want to be a Renaissance Festival mermaid, very often Ren Faire mermaids have more natural looks. So you might want to opt for a more natural look if that is your goal. If you are going to be in an aquarium, you might want to make sure that your tail either stands out in the aquarium or if you want to blend in with the colors in the aquarium and the fish, maybe you design your tail to do just that. Another consideration is if you hope to do a lot of traveling, you don't want a tail that has a really big fluke and can't fold up into a suitcase and travel easily because that will make your life very hectic. And we already discussed this, but if you are going to be working with children, you may want to think about having a tail that isn't going to be torn apart easily by children because they are quite destructive. And as we talked about before, another thing that you need to bear in mind is that as you were designing your Mersona and as you were finding inspiration for your Mersona's design, make sure you aren't copying others. We talked about this in a previous video. I've already told you many times, it's going to be linked in the description, but do not copy others. You will tick them off. For example, if you copy me, I'll be very angry with you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I hate it when people do that. And the last little thing I want to leave you with is think about this question. What does a mermaid look like to me? Maybe that's what you will use for inspiration as you design your Mersona if you were really stumped. Just think about what is it that I see a mermaid looking as when I think of a mermaid. My speaking's really bad today, but I think you get the gist of it. Well guys, thank you for watching this video on how to build the appearance of your Mersona. Tomorrow we will be covering how to build a story for your Mersona, which will cover some backstory stuff, some emotional stuff, and just adding depth to your character. I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like this one is a little bit clunky, but I'm glad you made it through. I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.